What's up, Weirdo? Shade Tree Surgeon here, and today I'm gonna finally do what I gotta do to get the old dirtster running. ODB has been offline for way too long. Well, technically offline. I haven't been riding it because I still haven't done the work I need to do and changed all the fluids and done everything because I was riding it through about three feet of water during the hurricane. So, uh, yeah, one owner, never ridden in the rain, never dropped, always garage capped. <laughs> I'm gonna do that because I miss riding that bike. But before we do that, time to drop off some Brapstar packages by motorcycle. Oh, I'd say these Brapstar Odin gloves are nice and broken in. One cool little feature about this bike that I never noticed, the gold wing is, it's a cool little safety feature that allows you to not forget to turn off your choke when you pull in the clutch to go it turns off your choke. I think that's pretty freaking slick. I mean, not quite all the way, but still. Yeah, I definitely can't be the only person out there who's left their choke on for miles after you needed it. I'll tell you, I still love taking a lot of the Brapsar orders up to the post office by motorcycle. It's the reason we all met, the reason we know each other, it's the reason they exist. It just makes me so very happy. I always said I would do it as long as I could, and it's gotten to the point now where sometimes the orders are just so damn big, you can't take them up by motorcycle anymore. I hate to do that, but I know that you guys would rather just get your packages, but when I have orders that just take up a box or two like that one, we still run it up there by motorcycle. So if you ordered the last 24 hours of uh, when I'm filming this video, today's Friday, September 29th, uh, your order got delivered by Dung Beetle. I don't think I'll ever stop taking at least some of them up by motorcycle. It's just too much fun. It makes me too happy. It makes me too happy, and it makes the USPS gnash their teeth in fury. Shake their fists in impotent rage. we live on. Wherever there is darkness in men's heart, wherever there's an evil glint in the eye, and those no-good bastards known as Shade Tree Army roam the earth, USPS shall never have a restful day. They shall never know peace. We shall hunt them and haunt them till the ends of the earth. Make no mistake, we are definitely the bad guys in this scenario, and the USPS is <laughs> the ever-suffering heroes. Hey, man, every hero needs an arch nemesis to define them, right? So, you know, big ups to the USPS for being the heroes, but, uh, you know, let's hear it for the villains, too, all right? This thing is looking a little bit like a boat anchor these days. See how grody this oil actually is. Oh, that's still pretty black. See a little lightness in it. I think it probably had a little bit of water in it, but it's still mainly black, which we'll go ahead and count as a good thing. This is nice, like a nice little slip and slide for the oil. A good buddy of mine bought me those. I use them all the time, so if you're watching, thanks, man. Just one fluid left. Let's see how bad this primary transmission fluid is. Pretty lucky, and I have not really seen any evidence of water damage besides a rusty chain, which a sucker, no rust anyway. Yeah, that definitely looks a little lighter than it should. That's all right, though. Well, I really don't think I got any water in my brake system either, but I'm gonna go ahead and drain all the fluid and replace it, at least in the front brakes. I recently did the back brakes because it's something you gotta do every once in a while, and this has been on some trips, and I'm actually feeling the front brakes starting to not perform as well as they used to, and uh, there's no reason they should. The pads are fine, everything's great, so that tells me that fluid in there is probably, mm, probably pretty gross. Yeah, that's looking pretty gross in there. California Point! Yeah, this one wasn't caused by riding through the hurricane. It's just general maintenance and it needed to be done anyway. Oh, 
Well, it's the next day in the AM and we've traded one bastard adventure bike for another on the lift over here. And even though we took this thing up a hill climb and we're doing dirt drags all over Eureka Springs, well, we don't really have anything to fix on this besides some foot pegs that are kind of in the wrong position now. But we do have something that we didn't actually finish last time. Believe it or not, this thing actually held up great off-road. Mostly due to that traction dynamics front suspension, man. That stuff really, really works well. In order to make that work, we had to have a custom axle built by our man Joe the Mountain Jedi and it's built out of mild steel which as you know will rust so we gotta do something about that. I'd be careful when you're taking this thing out on account of the fact that it's mild steel. All right let's do something about this as you can see it's already got come on focus focus it's already got a little bit of surface rust there on the end where it was exposed, but Joe showed me a little trick to deal with this. And believe it or not, the Sportster is actually going to help us out on this one because we're using the Sportster's old gross dirty oil. Oh, I knew I was saving this stuff for a reason. Now, Joe said the grosser the better. That'll fit the bill. Thanks. Like this, it makes me feel like a blacksmith. Like an old tiny blacksmith quenching his blade. Yeah, if you're gonna do it this way, make sure your area is well ventilated. He said about three times ought to do it. Well team, I'll tell you, I think uh, I think that one turned out pretty damn good. Score another one for Joe the Mountain Jedi, although I never doubted him. I have uh, I've learned not to doubt him at this point. So let's go ahead and throw this thing back together. As far as jobs go in the old dung beetle, that one was pretty easy. Well, scratch that. I say easy and it's still pretty easy, but I was so excited about my new oil blackened axle that uh, I forgot to put axle grease on it, which you still need. I don't care what I did to it. Still gotta put axle grease on it. So yeah, kinda getting ahead of myself here. Ooh, it's a greasy little piggy. ODB is back, baby. Oh, it is nice to get back on this thing after the... <laughs> after the dirt wing. Uh, the dung beetle is a blast, don't get me wrong, but uh, it ain't got nothing on power compared to ODB in this SNS 1250. That and uh, the dung beetle is probably carrying uh, an extra 200 pounds over ODB as well. <laughs> Man, I like this bike a lot. You can't keep a good sportster down, that's for sure. Uh, you can't really keep a bad sportster down either. They're pretty much rebuildable forever. As much as I love the dung beetle, I can't help it, boys. I am just an absolute sucker for ODB, the green bastard from parts unknown. 12 year old me could see me now on this absolutely ridiculous V twin adventure bike that I made myself. And that kid to be pretty gassed, all right? You know, when I was a little kid, I used to love using the wrong tool for the job. I used to like to try to get something done with something that wasn't supposed to have done it, if you know what I mean. And then I thought I grew up. I thought I knew better. I thought I, I said, I like, no, you, you need the right tool for a job. You're going to venture, you need an adventure bike. I thought I had grown up and left all that behind. And then I got even older, and I don't know if I finally realized the truth of what I really like, or if I just regressed back into being a 12-year-old. But all of a sudden, I have way more fun doing the right job with the wrong tool. As I said, I don't know if that's me uh, regressing back into childhood or if that's me finally realizing my absolute truth. The core of what makes Josh, Josh, is that I just like being an asshole. And when you show up to the trails on an air-cooled V-twin on a Harley Davidson Sportster, you look like an asshole. Of course, I could show up just about anywhere on this bike and look like an asshole. But let me tell you what, baby, it might be the wrong tool for the right job, but it gets it done. Ooh, yeah. Man, I'm glad I flushed that brake fluid. Having that front Brembo, Brembo, Bembo, Bembo, Bimbo, Bembo. Having that front Bembo, Brembo work like it should, that really feels good.
it stop good, it go good, it handle good, it sound good. Well, I guess the sound is, uh, yeah, that's up to the, the ear of the beholder, but, 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 but I'll tell you, this bike freaking rules, dude. As we come up on Forgotten Angels and you guys are coming up for the campground, that 15 mile an hour speed limit, there's kids and dogs and everything in between right up in front of here and uh, before there, not to mention sometimes coyotes that you can hit too. Yeah, ask our friend. So make sure you obey the posted speed limit and welcome home as you pass through the gates. And they got a whole ass tractor out on the, they got out there. I didn't even know they could drive a tractor on that thing. That's freaking nuts. Holy mackerel. I wonder if it floats. Everyone here is uh, super hard at work. I love it. They're cleaning everything up. Everybody's working hard. The goats are out. They're out there mowing the water. I don't know. That seems kind of made up if you ask me mowing the water, but they're out there doing it. And everyone just seems like they're doing such a great job. So I figure uh, I better skedaddle. I came here long enough to take the credit for all the hard work and it's time to leave. And that brings us back to the dung beetle. A motorcycle originally built as a joke and then turned into something with a purpose when we went down to Adam Sandoval's hill climb at Flathead's Rally Point, which it did accomplish with a little help from the crowd. We had a little help from the crowd, but uh, I love audience participation. After all, everything I do, I do it with a little help from my friends. I'll go ahead and jump on this thing, man. I love riding bikes back to back, and they might be incredibly different motorcycles, but the Dirtster and the Dung Beetle, they're cut from the same cloth, and that cloth might be a little ragged on the edges, and it might be a little dirty and oil-stained and threadbare, but uh, it's the same cloth, and we like it a lot. I don't even think it's the Dirtster's cousin. More like the Dirtster's creepy old uncle. You like popsicles? Just a testament to Goldwings in general, I'll say that this 1983 motorcycle, a 40 year old bike, can be transformed from its original form into a whatever it is now, be hauled halfway across the country, do a hill climb, uh, well, attempt a hill climb twice, and uh, be hauled up it bodily the second time around, do like 30 dirt drags in a row, and it still just rides around like a normal motorcycle. I mean, it really is something. And yeah, we were down to the wire making this thing. Of course I was, not that anything on it was that hard, besides the parts that Joe the Mountain Jedi did making the axle. Man, I had so much fun with this bike, and it really feels kind of sad to let it go and you might be wondering why we're letting it go why is the dung beetle going away well well the dung beetle's not going away per se just much like the sisterhood of the traveling pants in this case more like the traveling dirty old boxers but uh much like that the dung beetle is moving on and it's moving on to one of you guys that's right the dung beetle is the next raffle bike for forgotten angels if you guys watch the channel you know and if you're watching this far into the video because i always do this stuff at the end you know that forgotten angels is our passion building tiny homes for these young men who age out of foster care who get made homeless who are failed by the system that's who we support that's what we do around here and guess what this motorcycle the dung beetle the storied goron here this motorcycle is doing its part it was originally donated by someone to forgotten angels for the express purpose of be becoming what it is and then getting raffled off and given away to one of you guys for 25 bucks a ticket with 100% of that money, not hitting any branches on the way down. Nobody's taking a dime. All the stuff that I put into this bike, I paid for it with my own money. I bought it, nobody else paid for it. The bike was donated. Everything I had to do with it came out, of, did not come out of the raffle money. As I said, the raffle money for this stuff, it goes 100% to Forgotten Angels and none of it hits any branches on the way down. Well. That's what this bike's doing. That's what it was made for. It might have been built to die, but guess what? It didn't die because what is dead may never die. And instead it's going on to do good things. And you look at this motorcycle, it is uh, the very picture of bad people doing good things. And there might be some people out there going, well, I'm not buying a raffle ticket to win a 40 year old Goldwing that's been turned into an adventure bike. That's ridiculous. Who would want that? Well, there's some people who want it. I know there's going to be some people out there who have been waiting for me to announce that the dung beetle is going to get given away. Uh, you guys are true weirdos and I appreciate the hell out of you, you crazy bastards. But don't worry, the dung beetle's not all we're giving away. Trust me, I know that, uh, you know, the, the, I, I get it. I, I look at this bike, I understand. I understand that it's not desirable for everybody. Not everybody is going to get 
the dung beetle. And that's okay, it really is. I don't expect everyone to understand the allure of dung, okay? Not everybody is gonna appreciate the ooh, the stink that is the dung beetle. It cannot be expected. It's like a petunia. It's definitely an acquired taste, and I don't know what trauma you gotta go through to acquire it, but uh, you know, if you haven't gone through it, good for you. And even though donating to charity, because 100% of this money goes to charity, is its own reward, and even though buying a ticket to win the Dung Beetle also enters you to win $250,000 that we're giving away, even through all of that, I can't expect someone to just buy a ticket for just the Dung Beetle. I'm not asking you to do just that. We're giving away another adventure bike. And if the Dung Beetle is the Dirtster's creepy old uncle and uh, all these ADV bikes are in a family, well, the other motorcycle that we're giving away, it's that one member of the family who got their college degree, moved to Los Angeles to become a movie star, and, uh, you know, except for coming home for family reunions, like to pretend that they ain't related no more, but, you know, they still got it down in dirty side when you get them riled up. Let's go check it out. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario. Mario Brothers Super Show! That's right, you guessed it, or maybe you didn't guess it, but yes, we're giving away the pasta rocket. Oh, when I say we, I mean the royal we. I'm giving away the pasta rocket. The pasta rocket, the multi strata this motorcycle is everything that the Dirtster and the Dung Beetle ain't. They might be playing the same kind of music, but they are in vastly different bands. Ducati trash control, uh, 160 horsepower, wheelie control, off-road modes, uh, yeah. For some people, them being completely different bikes is a bad thing. For most people, it's exactly what they actually want. And I'm actually kind of afraid to ride this motorcycle, and uh, you know, I'm not afraid to ride it because it's fast. <laughs> that part I love. Although I guess you could say I'm afraid to ride it because it's fast, but not because I don't like the speed. I'm afraid to ride it because I love this motorcycle and uh, I'm worried that riding it around is gonna make me wanna change my mind. In fact, uh, you know, about 30 seconds on it, hitting ramen speed one time and I already want to change my mind, but I'm not going to. More on that in a second. Ah, this engine is freaking raw, baby. A bruiser, a brawler, a shot collar, baby. The multi strata takes no prisoners. This motorcycle's got grease in its hair, an Italian horn on a gold chain hanging around its neck that never actually touches its skin because it's nestled in its thick and luxurious chest hair. Skin tight white pants and a bulge that'll make your grandmama blush. This motorcycle showed up to do two things, eat bruschetta and hit on your girlfriend and baby. It's all out of hors d'oeuvres. Yeah, well, if this motorcycle's so awesome and, uh... It is awesome. You might be saying, why would I give it away? Why would I donate this motorcycle to Forgotten Angels? Why, why would I do such a thing if it's so amazing and I love it so much? Well, like I said, good reasons for that. And I do love this motorcycle, even though we got a little bit of a complicated history, but long time watchers of the channel remember when I got this bike. I originally got it because my Rocket 3 was in the shop getting completely rebuilt. Take it easy, lady. I was riding around Bark Party at the time, uh, but I, I wanted a reliable bike. I was commuting. I didn't live in Tampa anymore and I was still commuting to the Dirty Shame. And I know it sounds kind of weird to get a Ducati as a reliable bike, but believe it or not, the Ducati Multistrada is the most reliable motorcycle I own. The newest motorcycle too. And I was so proud of this bike. Literally the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life. I was so happy with it and just so excited. And yeah, I just, I, I called it Caligula because it did a little bit of everything, man. It can go touring, it can go off road. People take, I never took it on a track day, but lots of people take these things to track days. And it can be an in-town hooligan machine, jumping curbs, doing wheelies. Take the bags off this thing and it's basically just just a super moto with a with 160 horsepower. It wasn't even that I fell out of love with the bike. I've had my issues with it, but I'm not gonna get into those. But the issue I did have with it, were, which soured a relationship with me, was actually completely fixed by Ducati of America. Ducati of America came in, they checked out the engine, they completely gave it the thumbs up, green light. If this motorcycle ever had a problem that was due to the original issue, they will completely replace the motor 100% for free for the lifetime of the motorcycle, which tells me they don't expect that to happen since i had such a bad experience they wanted to make it right and let me tell you what man ducati of america
America, those guys are all right. They're good folks. I didn't buy this bike for YouTube. I didn't buy it to make YouTube videos. And I don't really buy any bike to make YouTube videos. I bought this bike because I wanted it, because I wanted a Ducati, baby. It felt like buying a Ferrari to me. I felt like such a grown up. And you know, one of the reasons I'm giving away is that I'm finally paying it off. I'm <laughs> Like, it took me that long, dude. Like I said, it was $11,000 or $9,000, $11,000 after everything was said and done. And I'm just now paying it off. You remember when I bought it? That was a while ago. It is what it is, baby. I've been through a lot with this motorcycle. I've been on a lot of journeys. I've taken it out of state. I've been off road. I've just, I've gotten into a lot of trouble on it too. This thing ripped. But yeah, this just feels like the right thing to do. And for 25 bucks, someone's gonna get to enjoy this Ducati, hopefully as much as I did. Well, I can hopefully more than I did. This is everything you could ever want. This is the ultimate do-it-all motorcycle without too many bells and whistles, which is one of the reasons I like it. All these nanny features that these new bikes have, yeah, they're like on this bike, but they're really easy to shut off and they're pretty non-existent. You don't have a ride-by-wire throttle. This is still just like a raw-ass motorcycle. What I'm saying is, this is about as fancy as I would ever get. So it's nowhere as fancy as a BMW GS or a Harley Pan America, but uh, it's got that uh, it's got that it factor, that umami baby. It's that one girl who takes her top off and starts a fight when she gets too much tequila in her. Baby, she does that one thing you really, really like, so you can never say no. I added up all the carbon fiber accessories it has, and it has something like five thousand dollars worth of carbon fiber accessories it's got a three thousand dollar full termione exhaust system this motorcycle is decked out rizoma everything i mean i don't know man it, it, I'm, 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 it sounds like i'm talking myself out of giving it away but i've made up my mind that's what's happening like if i feel like a little bit of a hollow pit in my stomach but it's going for a good cause it's going to do good things all you guys out there who buy raffle tickets 25 dollars a pot who are here to support the mission of forgotten angels support our expansion across the united states and we're helping all these people all these young men who've aged out of foster care here in florida the situation across the united states is so dire and that's what we're doing here for 25 bucks you can get this bike but what that $25 is really doing it's helping save lives that's what it's doing and you know what me donating this Ducati to Forgotten Angels is doing it's helping save lives I'm asking all you guys to sacrifice something out of your lives I should be willing to sacrifice something out of my life it would make me the ultimate hypocrite if I made these videos and didn't bother to sacrifice anything out of my own life I made these videos asking all of you to reach into your pockets if you have a little extra if you have extra to reach into your pockets and help somebody who has less well i've got extra i'm doing okay i've got this bike and yeah i could sell it you know it's probably worth like eight thousand dollars still i mean i got a hell of a deal when i got it even though it was the most expensive bike i ever bought it was an amazing deal so it's still worth money i could sell it here's the thing we're about to make the final payment on it and i could get my money back i could sell it but that's not what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it to Forgotten Angels, we're gonna raffle it off, and one of you guys out there is gonna get to enjoy the hell out of this motorcycle. And Ducati or not, I'd ride this motorcycle across the country right now. I'd also ride the 1983 Goldwing, the Dung Beetle. I'd also ride that across the country right now, but I wouldn't be as positive about that one. This one, this motorcycle will go anywhere, and it'll go anywhere fast, too. Yeah, potholes don't care at all, man. I love that, dude. Just like a like a leggy sport bike. Super sport fast, except you don't gotta watch out for potholes and speed bumps. Just soaks them right up, baby. I always called it like a, a sport bike for fat guys, because let me tell you what, if I put my fat ass on a GSX-R600, like a little bit like a meatball on a toothpick, like I'm wearing a motorized thong. On this motorcycle, I manage to look like a normal human being. It's rather nice. Uh, yeah, I like that. Let's go ahead and get this thing back to the fort before I completely change my mind. Because every mile I spend on this motorcycle, I'm just reminded about how much it absolutely freaking rules, dude. Oh yeah, Caligula was the right name for this sucker. It is decadent. 
sure there's a lot of people who still aren't completely sure why I'm giving away the Ducati. I'm gonna do my best here to explain it a little better without sounding self-righteous and without sounding like I'm making this up. It's, it's, it's a little difficult to put into words because there's a lot of motions at play right now. The first and foremost being this is the nicest thing I own. I mean, outside of my personal truck that I have, which is the business owns that, I don't own that, but still, you know, I drive it. Besides that, this is the nicest thing that I own and the most expensive thing that I own. You guys will know that we've taken a little bit of time off from the raffles. We've taken a couple weeks off and we haven't given away a bike in a while, even though obviously the grand prize of a quarter million dollars is still there or a house if you so choose. But we've taken some time off because running these raffles was difficult for me. It was hard. It was a lot of hard work, but I wasn't ever going to stop promoting. I wasn't ever going to stop giving away bikes. I wasn't ever going to stop talking to you guys about it. We are changing the world. I truly believe that. And a lot of you guys out there believe me too. Some of you guys might be on the fence. Some of you guys might just be trying to win some money or win a motorcycle. That's fine too. The money's still going to a good cause no matter why you donated it. But I would like you to know why you're donating and who you're donating to when you buy one of those raffle tickets. The reason I'm giving this bike away is what I said earlier. I can't sit here and ask you guys out there to donate 25 bucks to someone you don't know, to a person who's down on their luck, who's having a hard time, these young men who age out of foster care. They've never had anything, but you know what? You're still, you're living over there. You're doing your own thing. You've never met these people. Well, the guys who've been to the camp out have, but that's another story. Anyway, I can't ask you to do this without also showing you that I myself am also willing to make sacrifices. And it is a sacrifice. I want no one to think otherwise. If you take $25 out of your bank account and you buy a raffle ticket, sure, you might win something, but it is a sacrifice. You are taking something away from yourself. It could be fast food. It could be a video game you want. It could be anything. You're taking $25 out of your life and you're putting it to somebody who has less than you because you have extra. You have more and they have nothing. So you're sacrificing out of your own life to help somebody who has less than you. And that is amazing. And you should feel amazing for that. So you know what? Giving away this Ducati, it's not sad. I'm not upset. It feels amazing. This is the nicest thing I own. This motorcycle is decadent. I love it very much, but if I didn't love it, then it wouldn't be a sacrifice. For me to sit here and ride around a motorcycle this ridiculous and this decadent while there's so many people suffering out there, while there's so many people on the other side of the screen who've donated thousands of their own dollars, not just to buy raffle tickets, but because they support Forgotten Angels' mission, because they want to change the world. For all of you guys to do that, and for all this suffering to exist in the world, and for me to ride around this Ducati is just the height of arrogance, I feel. It's just absolutely, it's, I'm not sitting here saying I'm gonna take a vow of poverty or anything, but guess what? I've got this bike, I paid for this bike, it's a very nice machine, and I don't need it. I have extra. This motorcycle is extra to me. And as much as I love it, as much as I want to ride it around, the fact that I can sit here and talk to you guys and say, I'm going to sacrifice that. And I'm asking you to sacrifice $25 to Forgotten Angels. I want you to know that I am also willing to make those sacrifices. I'm not just sitting here asking you guys to, you to do it. And I'm not going to do it. I make the joke all the time. People say, man, it's really cool what you do for Forgotten Angels. And the joke I make every single time somebody says that is, well, I don't actually do anything. It's everybody out there in Shade Tree Army. It's all the weirdos. It's all the Brap Star crew. It's all those guys who actually do it because you guys are the ones who are donating the money. All this money we've raised for Forgotten Angels, all these kids whose lives we've saved, who's, who we've made into productive members of society, who they've plucked off the streets, who were destined for a life of drug addiction and homelessness and early death, and they've put them out there into the world. And now they have girlfriends and wives and they've got jobs and some of them joined the military. All those people, all those people got saved from you guys, from your sacrifice, from you buying a raffle ticket. And here we go again. We're moving forward. We're moving across the nation. We're trying to open up locations in Oregon, in California, in Georgia. We want to have it in all 50 states and Canada. We want to open up a Forgotten Angels near you. All the amazing times and the amazing things that happen at the property 
here in Tampa. We want those to happen in every single state. And we're doing that with a few thousand people. Now, I'm not calling anybody out for not buying a raffle ticket because I don't want anybody to stretch themselves thin. Not everybody can afford it, but if you can't afford it, you can afford to tell somebody about it. You can tell one person about it. But everybody out there, all you guys, it's literally all of this has been done with less than 5,000 people buying tickets. That's it. Now, don't get me wrong, 5,000 people is a lot, but I'm telling you, this is all of us doing this. And for all of you, for the thousands of you who sacrificed something out of your life for nothing in return, but knowing that you did something good and you helped somebody with less than you, I want you to know that I'm willing to do the same thing. I have to do the same thing in order to keep talking to you guys and asking you guys to still help support Dave and Cindy in their mission to end the cycle of abuse in the foster care system, to end the homelessness crisis. I don't know if we'll ever end it, but guess what? Somebody's got to fight it. The homelessness in America, in America, America. This is what's happening in America and there's no no one stepping up to fight it Well, they are and all of you are and if you're making a sacrifice I better be willing to make a sacrifice too. So you know what this feels good being able to have this motorcycle Being where I am in my life right now to take this bike and sacrifice it and give it to one of you guys for 25 bucks Because that's what you guys are doing. You're sacrificing something. It feels fucking good, man. It feels really good and it makes me very happy. Don't feel bad for me. I know there'll be people in the comments going, if I win it, I'll give it back to you. Don't. That's not what I want. That's not what I'm looking for. I want to do this because it feels good. Because Forgotten Angels, it saved my life as much as it saved everybody else's. It gave me a purpose. It made me look at the world in a different way. It made me think that I can actually make a difference, that 25 bucks can make a difference, that a little bit of work can make a difference, that the world can be changed. It's not all doom and gloom. And yeah, you know what? The odds are stacked against us. There's lightning cracking across the sky and it's real bad out there. But together, just us, just a few thousand people here on this stupid YouTube channel, all you guys who have YouTube channels out there who talk about that, just us. Look at what we've done. We have saved hundreds of lives, hundreds of lives and hundreds more to come. That's what we've done. Just a few thousand people with a like mind who are willing to sacrifice something out of their life to make a difference in this world. To take these young men and also young women as well, to take these young people, to take homeless people off the street and give them a, not even their second chance, their first chance to do that, to actually freaking step up David and Goliath and start swinging our sling at the homelessness crisis here in America, to step up and do that with just us is nothing short of amazing. And you know what? We ain't got no recognition. We ain't got no TV show. We ain't got no movie stars talking about this. They ain't talking about us on the news, all right? It's just us. And look at what we're doing with just us. You out there, you sitting watching this right now, you can make a difference. You can click that link down below, you can buy a raffle ticket, and you have no idea how far $25 goes. That's a tank of gas, that's a meal. That can change somebody's life. You know how many young men have come to them? Have come to them, they've had no gas in their car and they've had to wire them gas money just so they can drive to Forgotten Angels or they've had to buy them a bus ticket. If you think $25 doesn't make a difference, you know what, it might not to the Red Cross. It might not to these big charities that have a bunch of overhead that have people working for them, but that's not how it is here. It doesn't hit any branches on the way down. Just like this bike's not gonna hit any branches, okay? Well, it might hit some branches if you take it off road, but I'm donating this bike, okay? Just like you guys are donating your money. Just like all so many other people have donated their bikes and so many other people who want to donate their bikes that I haven't gone to pick them up yet. I'm very sorry. It's just been a pretty tumultuous time in my own personal life right now and it's been pretty crazy. I promise I'm getting back to you. I'm terrible at returning phone calls, but I'm getting back to you. So many people, dozens of people have sacrificed their own motorcycles to donate to them to Forgotten Angels. Thousands of people have sacrificed money out of their own wallets to help people who have less than them, to help people who never even got their first chance, to help people who were failed by their parents, who were failed by the system. And you know what? When the family you're assigned to at birth lets you down, and when the government that's supposed to catch you when you fall lets you down, who's left? Well, it's us, baby. We're what's left, and we're gonna do it right. The people that you're helping have had nothing in their lives. They have been through so much abuse you can't even imagine it. They are people who have been prostituted by their own mothers, people who've been injected with meth from their own mothers, people who have been beaten, abused psychologically, physically, sexually, and then taken out of that scenario and thrown into a loveless, careless, just absolutely devoid of any kind of emotion environment to just sit around and wait till they turn 18 and then they get made homeless. That's what we're dealing with here. People who have just been spit on, kicked, 
eat, just been through the absolute ringer and never even got chance one. That's where your money is going. And at Forgotten Angels, they do it case by case. They do it kid by kid. They're people who actually care. They take these young men and they teach them life skills. They learn how to ride motorcycles. They learn how to drive a stick shift car. They get bank accounts. Some of them join the military. They learn how to be men because they were never taught. And if you think you're a man at 18 years old when that's what you went through beforehand, well, you must be made of tougher stuff than most people out there because they still need to get taught how to be an adult. They need to be taught how to be a man. They just don't need like a month's rent and an apartment and a pat on the back and say, go get them champ. They need to be like reprogrammed from years of abuse and taught how to be productive members of society. And you know what the alternative is? These people in tent cities, drug addicts on the streets, amazing human lives that are otherwise completely wasted because they fall through the cracks. That's the alternative and that's what we're fighting. And we wanna bring the fight to you. We wanna bring the fight across the United States, across Canada. That's what we're trying to do. We're doing it together and you can do it too. Click that link down below. Two weeks from now, well, two Fridays from now, I'm giving away that Ducati and the Dung Beetle if somebody wants it. If some psychopath out there chooses the dung beetle over the Ducati? Well, that's your prerogative, man. I don't think anybody's gonna do it and I actually wouldn't recommend it, but you do you, chief. But the Friday after next, we're giving those away. So click that link down below, buy a raffle ticket, help make a difference, help change the world. We can do it. It's actually happening. I appreciate every single one of you guys who has made this happen. I appreciate every single person who sacrificed something. I appreciate every person who has just told another human being about this. Click the link down below. It's gonna take you to a raffle that says uh, Dream House Giveaway because it also enters you to win either a house or $250,000. And even if you win the bike, you're still entered for that too. You guys are absolutely amazing. We are bad people doing good things. Until next time, y'all. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree, army, shade tree, army, armies of the night, evil taking flight. Shade tree, army, shade tree, army, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadliest of foes? Shade tree, army, shade tree, army. Who will risk it all to end the evil call of shade tree, army, shade tree, army? They never give up, they never say die, walking tall with banners high. Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers determined to rule the world.